Hi, I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer, and today we're going to talk about stress hormones and the amygdala and how they create a state of hypervigilance in times of crisis. We want to retrain our brain so that it can get out of fight, flight, or freeze. So today we're going to offer at the end of this video some simple things you can do at home, because many of us are staying home right now, to retrain our brain and to get out of that constant state of fight, flight, or freeze. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Welcome back to my channel if you're joining us again. And I thank you for coming back if you're new to the channel. On this channel, I help motivated women and men reclaim their hormones, reclaim their vitality, and rediscover the magic of feeling well. But during this difficult time of COVID-19, I'm going to focus on stress hormones and the role that they play, particularly in this video. Stress hormones and the amygdala and the hypervigilance syndrome we can get from that. I'm seeing that in a lot in my patients. I've seen it in myself this past week um, with managing some difficult situations with symptoms and managing patients from home. So you're not alone if you're feeling extra anxious, extra jumpy, nervous, um, heart palpitations. All of those things can be representative of what happens when you feel hypervigilance, when you're stuck in a state of fight, flight or fright or freeze. Um, so we're going to talk about that today and ways that you can hopefully retrain your brain and calm that down. So please join us. And at the end of this video, we'll have some simple things you can try to do at home since many of us are stuck at home. So it's a sur surreal, chaotic time right now. Many of us are confused. There's so many mixed messages coming from our various sources of media. Um, there's a lot of stress with going outside, with encountering other people. We're supposed to stay away from other people at least six feet. So that's it. That is causing us to be isolated in some situations. Um, and we're not maybe reaching out as much as possible or talking to others about our feelings. So it's a good time to, to do that. And you're not alone if you're feeling anxious or any of those physical type symptoms, which, like I said, can include jumpy, you know, you jump when something, a noise happens that you wouldn't normally happen or you wouldn't normally jump from, heart palpitations, insomnia, um, eczema, skin rashes can flare up. A lot of things can, can be aggravated during this time of crisis. That's why we're going to try to offer some, some things to calm down all those neurotransmitters that are in overdrive and the amygdala. So what can happen when we have these kind of stress responses, particularly when we have an acute stress like that built on top of maybe a chronic level of stress, which I see in a majority of my patients on a daily basis. So then we have this acute, significant, worldwide um, stress that's coming upon us from this potential illness. And that really aggravates a lot of these stress hormones that are already in overdrive. And those would include norepinephrine, epinephrine, also called adrenaline and cortisol. So the norepinephrine and the adrenaline or epinephrine are released immediately. Then the cortisol is released from the adrenal uh, system in times of stress. And those can kind of stay elevated when we don't have the relaxation or the rest and digest messages to calm them down. Like I said, I, I have been feeling a lot of those symptoms. I have been feeling nervous and jumpy. I have had difficulty even just calling in prescriptions for patients just because I'm so worried about the patients that I'm remotely monitoring in their homes. So it's affecting all of us, particularly the frontline healthcare workers and the people that are still having to work in grocery stores or delivery or any of those jobs where they're still in contact with other people and they're feeling scared. So you are not alone. I also wanted to talk about some other neurotransmitters um, that would include glutamate. And our glutamate is released and it's kind of our get it done kind of neurotransmitter where it's like, okay, let's learn this. Let's memorize this. It's our learning and memory neurotransmitter, but it needs to be balanced and we don't want it overexcited in an over excitatory kind of state. So when it does that, then it's not able to signal the flip side of the coin, which is the GABA neurotransmitter that helps calm us down. So if we have too much glutamate messaging going on, then we can't calm down. And then our amygdala is our emotional um, fear center in our brain. So we it helps us remember fearful things or situations. And then if we are put in a similar situation like that, again, it can signal that fear because we want to remember what fear is because we don't want to put ourselves into scary situations. But during times like this, our amygdala can kind of 
create a sense of hypervigilance where we're always on and we can't calm down. So it takes a while to retrain your brain. We know that from our studies with many other brain, um, like cognitive defects or cognitive injuries, that it takes a lot of time to retrain our brain. So we don't expect any of these things that we recommend to, that I'm recommending today to happen overnight. But if you keep practicing them, particularly in this difficult time, that may be an extended period for some of us, then it really will help you. Because if our brains stay in this hypervigilant state, it creates a sense of, or it, it creates a state of inflammation in our body. When we are inflamed, our immune systems are not as strong. So our brain hypervigilance definitely dampens our immune system, and we don't want that right now. We want a strong immune system. So what we want to do is to calm down, to control the glutamine, keep it at a good level, to calm down and balance the norepinephrine, epinephrine, or adrenaline, and the cortisol. So I have a lot of videos on cortisol response and cortisol management. And so those will supplement or help out the information that I'm presenting here and probably be reinforced some of the things I'm saying in those too. But I, I thought it would be nice to draw it all together and give you some things you could do at home. So first thing, something I talk about a lot with the relaxation response um, is to practice something called progressive muscle relaxation, where you start at your toes, you know, sit in a seated position like this or laying down, relax your toes, relax your feet, relax your, the bottoms of your feet, your heels, your lower legs, your legs, working your, all the way up to all your muscles, working all the way up. And, you know, repeat a mantra while you're doing that. And attached as a P free PDF that you can download, I have, I think it's about 45 mantras you can do to, to retrain your brain into the into more positive space and out of that anxiety and fear space. So I would recommend you check those out. Also, I've talked a lot in my videos about um, deep breathing. And particularly in this situation where we're worried about a, a virus that can affect our lungs, it's good to have healthy lungs anyway, but it also helps your brain relax, balance those neurotransmitters, and retrain the messages we are giving our brain. So I'm going to say it again, relaxation breathing, deep breathing, four, seven, eight is the method I usually teach. So inhale for four, hold for seven counts, inhale all the way down to your belly, and relax for eight counts. So slower than I just did it. And I would repeat that three times, several times throughout the day. I often tell people to do it at the beginning of their meals so that they remember and they have a rest and digest message going to their brain. It helps your metabolism. And then I would recommend you do it in the morning when you first wake up and at night. And then anytime you start to feel those palpitations or those nervous messages in your brain, where you feel really jumpy and just out of sorts. So some of the mantras that are in the PDF that I have attached are this too shall pass, I am healthy, I am strong, I am calm, I will calm my mind and overcome this feeling. So practicing those mantras while you do a progressive muscle relaxation or even while you do the deep breathing is very helpful. Constantly giving your brain those messages will reverse those other messages that are coming into your brain. So remember, if you choose some mantras that work well for you, say them throughout the day frequently, write them down, journal, write them in notes, post-it notes on your bathroom mirror, or and type them, put them into your phone, um, put them into your calendar on your laptop or your phone, put them on top of your computer. Do whatever you can to reinforce that message as often as possible. Listen to calming music, so maybe not the most banging kind of music that might motivate you, but listening Balancing that out with listening to calming, relaxing music. Stop the stressful TV cycle. You need to, you know, check in with the media and the news, but maybe set a time period like 15 minutes twice a day that you can do that, or 15 minutes twice a day be it to be on Facebook, or 15 minutes twice a day to be on social media. You could be on it for other things in limited amounts, but for the actual virus messages or the nervousness that's going around in the media, try to limit that. Um, and on the flip side, watch some comedy, find some Netflix comedy routines or com comedic shows that they have. Stay away from the stressful shows or, you know, any of the other streaming services. I'm not partial to one. Disney Plus, I like uh, Amazon Prime, any of those. 
anything that you have at home that would have a relaxing, calming message and make you laugh. Laughter is very important for retraining the brain. So smile a lot, even if you don't feel like it. Just don't force it. Just try to practice smiling and laughing at home. I know a lot of us are home and bored. Um, meditation apps, I've mentioned those a lot. So Calm, Headspace, Budify, Insight Timer, 10% Happier, all great things to check out and to keep in your uh, play to balance out the social media messages, the other media messages, and use those apps instead on your phone, on your laptop, when you're working, just take a break and do five minutes of a meditation. Even just five minutes can retrain your brain and make it more relaxed. What else? Oh, Epsom salt baths with lavender oil are great. So those are all some things you can start doing at home. I would recommend you do all of them. If you can, just do all of them. And then some helpful... Oh, one thing I was going to ask was, what are you doing? I want you to put in the comments down below what you are doing to help stay relaxed. And then some helpful herbal nutrient and nutrients that can calm down the glutamate, calm down the cortisol, calm down the neurotransmitters. And I have some links down below you can check out. And my other videos give some doses and some of my other PDFs, some of my free PDFs when you join for that from the newsletter and you click on that, you can see all the PDFs. So there's lots of them that have some dosing regimens in them. And you always want to check that out with your provider. But holy basil, phosphatidylserine reduces cortisol, um, CBD, but they uh, Bach flower has a great relaxation one. Magnolia, passion flower, chamomile, um, L-theanine is wonderful. I have most of my patients use L-theanine throughout the day, 200 milligrams a few times a day. It's fairly safe, can be used by most people. Glutamate, it reduces the glutamate. Um, GABA, uh, there's a product called 200 milligrams of Zen that I love that has GABA and L-theanine in it. That can be very helpful in times of hypervigilance. And then for immune system and um, for your adrenal balance and cortisol balance, I'd recommend vitamin C. And I have some posts on that on my Instagram account, which you'll see links. And then there's lots of information out there about vitamin C right now. And on my Facebook, I have information on that too. So if you need further support on this, I have that downloadable PDF for the mantras and some other cortisol balancing PDFs that you can check out. And then please send me some questions or if you have some ideas from some further information you might need right now, please let me know. I would love to help. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified when I post videos every week, usually on Fridays, but my schedule is a little different right now. So I post them when I can because I am still working with patients directly every day and monitoring them remotely. So my schedule is a little weird, but I'm going to try to post every Friday. And if you have any questions, concerns, let me know. And you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook. And I hope you stay healthy and you stay mentally well. So don't forget about your mental status and to check out these tips and all the other great information that's out there right now on relaxation of the brain and the free meditations that people are putting out. Please start meditating. That's a great time to do this. So thanks for joining in and we'll see you next week.